What's going on, everybody? Your boy Blake, Money Blake Weather. Another episode of Loaded Joe's MMA Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, Want to shout out all of our sponsors real quick, man. Gear Athletics, GetGearWorldwide.com. Check them out. Again, I got my gear hat on always. NOP Media, thank you for the background. Get at them for all the graphic needs. Check them out online, NOPmedia.com. Austin Kickboxing Academy, of course, where I train at. Zen Soap, uh, Total Nutrition, and of course, uh, everybody else, man. Thank you so much. Our guest today is a co-main event of next week's Titan. Excited to have him on. Always love having the big boys on. It's always great to see some young blood in, in uh, the divisions. Uh, we have Vulcan. Ozdemir, I don't even know if I pronounced that right. Vulcan, how do you pronounce your last name, brother? Ozdemir. Ozdemir. And Ozdemir, yeah. Yeah, I got that shit. Uh, how you doing, Vulcan? I'm doing great. So what about you? Uh, brother, I'm doing good, man. Um, just uh, you know, day off, relaxing, um, and uh, yeah, man. How about you? You're in training camp. Don't worry about me. How you doing, uh, man? No, no day off for me. No day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like nonstop going. You know, like. It's good. Like every day is like um, a lot of trainings. You know, I do some privates by the, at the side, you know, and stuff like that. But it's nonstop also for me. You know, I, I wake up at eight in the morning and uh, I basically finish my day at six. But then I have to take care of stuff. You know, a lot of also I get a lot of driving around because I, I got a few gym I have to go through. So, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty tough, but it's, I love it, you know. Yeah, man. Um, why? Well, let's start from the beginning, man. What's your background? What made you want to get into MMA, man? That's always – you always get interesting stories that way, man. What, what is your background with MMA, brother? So, yeah, I started by doing karate when I was younger because, you know, I was like a agitated kid, you know. Like I had to channel my energy, you know, like and get, get through my violence and shit. And all. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I started karate when I was interested in, in a bunch of martial arts. So – I wanted to, to know everything, you know, like perfectly, like boxing, so my hands, my kicks, my knee. So I tried a lot of stuff, you know, boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai. I did Kempo, Ninjutsu, Capoeira, you know, I did a bunch of stuff uh, until I ended up in uh, MMA, you know, because I wanted to be the best at everything. So that was the perfect, perfect sports for me. And so you're from Switzerland. So all I, a lot in Europe, it's a lot of they do a lot of striking shit like they're very yeah. good in kickboxing. Uh, you know, you got Fran Savate and, and uh, got a lot of good just European boxers out there. Um, and, and, and so what was the point when you were done with striking? How old were you? I mean, and you were like, damn it, I got to come to America. I got to get on this grappling shit. I mean, how, how long ago was that? So it's pretty new. I mean, it's been, it's been a year now. I'm living in, here in Florida, you know. And, um, yeah, basically I came here because I wanted to improve my wrestling, you know, and be training with the best team in the world, you know, and uh, with a, a bunch of talented guys, you know. So, yeah, I, f I find my place here and people welcome me really. It, it was it was good, you know. So, yeah, that was a year, a year and a half maybe, you know. I came here, I went back home, and then I, I decided, yeah, I'm just going to leave everything there, you know, like everything behind me and just, you know, move. Move to America, you know. Move to America. How long ago was that, man? It's been a year, you said. It's been a year, yeah. It's been a year. And you've you've been at, at Brazilians for a year, or you've kind of been traveling everywhere um, for a year. Yeah, I'm I'm staying I'm staying here for a year. Like it's been a whole year. I haven't been back home. That's crazy, man. Your family. I bet your family's like, "What's up, Vulcan? You <laughs> miss us?" What? I mean, yeah. you got brothers, sisters. What's up with your family, man? They they missing you? They sending love? Yeah, they do. Uh, I mean, like. It's okay. It's just like Christmas, you know, or like birthday. That's when when we have family reunion. You know, that's always a little bit different, you know, and stuff like that. But you know, like overall, they know I, I'm doing that for myself, you know, because I that's my goal. You know, I, I'm I'm not doing that like halfway, you know, or I go 100% into it, or I don't do it, you know. So that's how I am. So I want to do it 100%. So I'm not gonna go back home until I've money you know fame success you know like i'm not gonna go back home until that well you're killing the game right now uh, i saw you were in the that bellator the the light heavyweight um what was it they had that light heavyweight tournament back in 2014 and uh it, it was you and like kelly anderson was in it and liam liam mcgeary was in it uh what was it like man i mean of course you're with titan but what was it like being in bellator i've been i, I bet you it felt like 
you're like, damn it, I'm doing, I'm doing something good. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to where I want to be. Was it a good feeling, man? Like having, being on that stage, being on that national level. That was the first time for me I, I had something huge, you know, like, like for me, you know, back home it was like America, you know, like wow, USA, you know, and then made that's where the, you know, right, the place to be, and I was like part of that show, and I was like, yeah, so. Now it's finally became, became real, you know, like, because you put a lot of st- blood and sweat into it. And then finally something, you accomplish something and you're like, okay, I, I didn't do that for nothing, you know, like, so that, that was huge for me, you know, so um, that was a huge experience, you know, and um, I'm pretty happy. And, but now, you know, my, my focus is, is on the Titan belts, you know, and, um, you know, it's next week. So I'm, I'm hyped, you know. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. I got a question for you, man. You're from you're from Switzerland, and I like a lot of I like. I'm a huge fan of EDM. Um, do you listen to a lot of EDM, man? I know that's a lot. All like in Europe, it's it's huge, man. Right? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, who, who do you listen to, man? Who's your favorite? Oh, you know, I'm I'm more also a hip hop guy, you know. Okay. So, so I basically when I'm listening to music, I I basically only put some French rap or other stuff too you know but i'm listening to everything you know like i've i've been you know i had my period i was listening to metal music you know, a lot you know Jesus. like black metal death metal a lot, a lot of stuff a lot <laughs> of stuff like that and and yeah i mean basically i've been into a lot of different you know style too you know like punk rock you know like oi music and a lot of different movements you know but i'm really open mind you know i love reggae i love sky music i love a lot, a lot of stuff you know so Music is something I really, I'm really into it. You know, I'm I'm not listening to music like many people listen to music. Okay. You know, I'm like really into it. You know, like um, I love like the emotions. You know, like even classical music and stuff like that. I'm really into emotions. You know, so yeah. So when you're when you're when you're working out, what do you got? Who who are like three artists you got to have on your playlist when you're working out, man? Um, you know, like when I work out over there, it's more like. U.S. hip hops, you know, so it's, lo- it's more people like Future, you know, you know those guys like Young Tug, whatever, you know. But when I'm list- when I'm working on myself, you yeah. know, I listen to French rap, so Booba, you know, Carries, a lot of guy like that. And um, it depends also the mood I am into, you know. So yeah, that's what's up, man. I gotta get in on some shit, man. I always hear like the soundtracks. You get some French rap and some some movies, and I'm like, oh shit, that shit's cool. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Y'all got the movement going on over there, man. Um, so are are you? I mean, you're you're from Switzerland. Is your is any part of your family France? I mean, do you kind of? I mean, you sound like you like French rap. Are you all? You know, all your family from Switzerland or anything like that? Yes. So we we speak French. You know, um, I'm from the part of Switzerland where we speak French. So we're close to the French people. Okay. And okay. Um, so that's why I guess you know. So but. You know, I'm not French. I don't. Okay. <laughs> I'm not saying I don't like them, but it's like <laughs> different. You know. Yeah. It's like it's really we we love like we are like Swiss French, I guess. You know to, how how you can call that, but like we 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 don't like to be like misunderstood like as a French people. You know, like we are Swiss. Right. Like I'm in Texas. Like we're not Mexico, but we're close to Mexico, and I speak Spanish. <laughs> yeah. <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So I'm not I'm not Mex well I am Mexican but yeah. I'm not from Mexico yeah I get it man I'm with you I'm with you we're close mm-hmm. got that thing going on um, what has been um, from somebody coming over here to America man what has been one of the things I, I, maybe even the last year even since you you trained you never thought you'd get to or that you're at uh, whether it's level wise or training partner wise I mean what's one of the things that excites you every morning wakes up God, like god damn man i'm doing this i can't believe this you know what what actually i'm gonna say something that kept me going is like a lot of people have talents a lot of people have you know like knowledge and good level but not many put the right amount of sacrifice into it and we always say like never give up you know blah 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 we all everybody talk about that but you know what what giving up is is like it's really when you want to give up that and you keep on going, you keep on grinding and fighting that you can finally say, I did not give up, you know? Yeah. But some people who always talk like, yeah, don't give up, blah, blah, blah. When life is beautiful, when life is 
you know, pink and whatever, you know, it's so easy. You you can't you can't be a fighter. You can't be a, a survivor if you if you say that without having, without going through really bad stuff and moment of depression depression or you know bad moments. You know, so that's it. It's like when you know with fighting, you know, it's hard. You know, with the financial situation, you know, like the grinding, you know, and it's a, it's a tough world, you know, it's like a lot of competition. You know, it's not like you're going to play hockey or like tennis and you're going to, you know, like whatever. Not like people come here every day to fucking kick your ass, you know, so you have to, you have to go, you know, you have to go get it. So you really need to have a focus, you know, if you don't have any focus in somewhere, you know, like winning, whatever is your reason you're finding, you know, money, fame, whatever, you know, you need to just go through, through that day, you know, day by day, you know. It's the struggle. Like, the struggle yeah. is real. It, it is, it is, yeah. What you're saying, yeah. No, nah, man, um, I get it. You can't have the you can't have the, the peace moments, the great moments, without having the struggle moments, the, the oh, good, the, the bad moments. You, yeah. you don't even recognize what good is until you've had it bad. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, you that's know, true. I, I wasn't ra- I wasn't raised, like, you know, best of standards. And, 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 but, like, you don't know what good is until you get older and, and you're able to do it just like when you're a fighter you don't know what like good is until you've gone through the struggle sleeping on people's couches and <laughs> fucking you know yeah, yeah. I, i've talked to plenty of fighters man it's it, the struggle is real bro and the, the sport it's not basketball it's not football you can't just yeah. go to high school and then get recruited like it, it's not there yet you know and even <laughs> for somebody like you you come from europe you got all your eggs in this basket yeah and 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 it's either make or break, live or die. And your record shows it, man. Like there's not a whole bunch of losses you have. You have one loss, and you got all these knockouts. You're killing motherfuckers in the game, and you're in a division in light heavyweight. And it's not to hype you up. It's not to suck your dick. Like you're in a division in light heavyweight that's not. It's not really deep. Any any which way you go, there's not a whole bunch of like. There's like the top four or five guys in every you know kind of organization. And then after that, it kind of falls off. So. Does does that kind of give you being realistic with yourself? Does that kind of give you some hope? Like, damn, I can make a name for myself in this division, and it's a little bit more easier than if I was a hundred thirty five, a hundred forty five, one hundred fifty five pound guy. You know what I mean? That's for sure. I mean, there's le- way less people, so that's also that's why I, I, I'm surprised I, I I wasn't signed like sooner and stuff. You know, but I understand also where I'm, where, I, where I'm coming from. But um, there is not a bunch of people and good people, so. You know, I just, if I want to, if just, I just need to keep winning, you know, and I'm going to make my way to the top two, you know, like fast, because there is not a lot of guy, but for sure, if I will be a 155, one, whatever, like 35, 45, you know, that's a bunch of people in here, you know, you got to be really, really good and fucking grind if you want to make it to the top, you know. Right, right. So even then, there's a little bit of a break for you, man. If there's some shining light for you there, you're not a, you're not a smaller guy, you know, because you don't have to. (laughs) Again, you don't have to, uh, I think, do as much as those guys because you have to not only do what you fight, do promotion. Then you got to do extra promotion so people know about you online. And I think it's so much more of a grind for those guys. I got a lot of respect for a lot of fighters, those guys in particular. But uh, coming back to this division, man, what what things in this training camp or how long have you known about this fight? I mean, I mean walk me through just – being in a fight camp, obviously, there's a lot of promotion about this. It's on UFC Fight Pass. You're doing an interview right now. What's going on through your head? Let's start me from the beginning of camp to where we're at right now, a week and a half away from camp, man. So the only problem with, with my training camp was, like, I was supposed to fight three, time, three times already. What and the fuck? This is back, and, back and forth, you know, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I was supposed to fight December. What, what, what was it? Like Second, I think. And um, oh yeah, I remember that. Okay, they the day the of the fight, you know, like the guy was actually suspended, you know. Oh and my god! I don't know the story, the real story or whatever, but I was mad. So at first, I, I I thought he chickened out, you know, but um, I guess he was suspended already, but he still went when when he do the weighing, you know, I guess the athletic commission find out he was about to fight, and then they didn't allow him, you know. So I, I came there at six p.m. the day of the fight, you know, like presenting myself just to sign in and then the guy told me hey you have to wait over there and I was like why you know like I said I don't know I need to call the boss you know and then the boss came and as he was walking through me I saw on his face you know he was like 
sad, upset, whatever. I was, I was like, oh, I'm not fighting. I know that. Fuck. Yeah, he told me, hey, the guy can't fight, blah, 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 you know. So, so yeah, so it was like a lot of deception, you know, like up and down. So after that also, I, I went into three full fight camp, you know, I just stopped. It was end of the year, you know, Christmas, you know, like New Year's. But then I found out um, two weeks ago, you know, I'm going to fight this guy. So I went back. I went back in, you know, I'm, I kept on go, I kept on training hard and, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm ready, you know. I'm hungry, too, you know, because it's been a few times I haven't, I need to fight now, you know. Right. You were all over the fight posters, you and you and your opponent. I remember that. Yeah. It was supposed to be yeah. four fight, four title fights, and I think yeah. there's only two. And yeah. And I remember watching the fight, and I'm like, okay, I'm ready for this light heavyweight shit, and... Vulcan's nowhere to be found. It's like, oh, no, no. god damn. They didn't, they didn't explain anything. Like, I watched the whole pay-per-view or the whole thing on USC Fight Pad. They didn't explain anything. Yeah, I guess it doesn't sound professional, but, I mean, Titan really handled my situation really well. So mm -hmm. I cannot say nothing bad about them. You right, know, right, like, right. It, it was really good. You know, I got everything I, I wanted. They, they gave it to me, you know. It wasn't their fault, you know. So I guess, you know, it's better to... Keep it on the low, you know. <laughs> but uh, you know, <laughs> there you go, man. I'm with them, you know, so it's fine. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, th I, I mean, I get it. Like, you don't want to go around being like, "Oh, this guy pulled out. It doesn't look good." Um, mm. are, so, is it the same guy that you're fighting, or is it a different guy you're fighting? I'm fighting a different guy. You know, actually, the guy. I don't think it was his fault because I think he's he's a fighter, I guess. You know, because he had a broken foot a week, two weeks ago, uh, before the fight, and he just wanted to come here and fight but he was already suspended because of that that's the story i know so it wasn't his fault though you know like he just he, he was a fighter you know he came to fight but then he wasn't allowed to so you know but that that fucks up i mean it can fuck up the part where you're getting ready for this guy and now oh, you've yeah. got oh, now yeah, you've got another sure. like five and you know weeks like also i'm, I'm looking else. you know like, as i told you it's been three fights I, i'm trying to get in and like i'm waiting you know like is the time fly, you know, like, I'm not getting old, you know, but I mean, like, you know, I need to make a living too, you know, right. so yeah, that's the, that's the situation, you know, I need, I need to improve, you know, I have one more victory, two more victory, you know, so I'm not good knockout and then, you know, just to make my way to the top, you know. It's not just the victory, it's the money, man, like, yeah. money, money always, money never hurts and you're not getting any, any younger, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like, um. Let me see it. Let me look at you. I'm looking at your – you're about my age. I'm 28. Um, I was born July of 88. You're born in yeah. September of 89. We're about the same age. Yeah. My man, we're not getting any younger, bro. We got to <laughs> We got to do what we can do when we can do it. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. yeah, I'm losing all my hair already. <laughs> but listen, both? I got some for you, bro. I got I got some hair for you. You can borrow some of mine. <laughs> you got extra. <laughs> Uh, I keep my rogue game, game strong, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, like, um, I get what you mean. It, it, it's, it's, it comes down to, you know, it's, it, it, there is, a, it's always a money thing when it comes to fighters, man. They always want to try to do the most. And, and I think it's a great move to be on Titan. It's not your fault that, you know, X amount of opponents had to pull out, uh, X amount of dates had to pull out. And it doesn't make it any easier for you in camp when coaches are like, okay, we need to work on this and this. <laughs> And, mm -hmm. you know, we can't work on this and this because we don't even know what the motherfucker, who you're fighting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. How, how do you how do you train? Do you leave it up to the coaches? Do you lot, watch a lot of film? I mean, what is your take on all of that, man? It's, it depends what, what coach, you know, because some coach, you know, like, doesn't really believe in game plan. You need to make yourself strong. You know, you need to know what, what is good with you. And just, you just need to learn MMA, you know, like our style. You know, then we have our style. We're good, you know, with that's because we are good at what we do. But then you, you know, there is also that part who, where we have to specifically, you know, training for someone, you know, and then that's when the game plan and, you know, and stuff like that come into into mind, you know. Right. Right. No, for sure. It, how is it training with somebody like Henry Hoof? Because if you're a fan of MMA like me, you, of course, you see Henry Hoof and, and all these, these guys' uh, corners. You see Rashad Evans and all these guys' corners. Mm -hmm. Is it a kind of a surreal feeling, or is it after the first or two times, three times you train, you're just kind of like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm normal to it. This is, this is good, good, but it doesn't affect me anymore. I mean, or, I mean, was there a time where you were kind of like starstruck by Henry? For me, 
<laughs> Henry Hoof is one of Henry Hoof's one of my favorite coaches because I'm a huge yes. uh, uh, Dutch kickboxing style. Yeah, uh, I love to train it. I prefer it over kind of a, a Muay Thai Thai based style. So seeing somebody like Henry Hoof when he trains and when he when he I, I see him yelling in the corner, it for me it gives me tingles. I'm a huge fan of his. Mm-hmm. What's it like for you though to be trained by him? And was there ever a time where you were like, ah, damn, it's, it, I feel lucky, I feel good, this is a great place in my life? So I've never been a fan of anyone, you know? I'm, I'm not like an, a, a fanboy of something oh, like that. Me. So <laughs> I know if I'm I know if I'm here somewhere, it's because I worked for it, you know? And But then Henry has also the perfect style for me because I really love his style and his, um, the way he fights. And he really understood... Because some people came from Dutch kickboxing, you know, but they don't, they don't realize... You know, it's different in an in MMA. Very different, so yeah. He has a really, really, really good understanding, you know, a really good transition. Like, he, he tra- transitioned that really well. So his style is really good. And, you know, like, real, recognize real. You know, if you see, like like you say, Rashad, you know, AJ, you know, those guys are, like, killers, you know, like, who has the best striking in life every way than, than AJ, you know, Anthony Johnson, you know, no one. So That's if true. you know, like, if you just put one and one together, you know, like, you know, that's that's how you that's how you know. Henry is the is the real OG, you know. Like he's a he's a perfect <laughs> coach, and he's like, like you say, like the way he corner, you know, he's like he's a tough guy, you know, he's a fighter, you know. So he's he's the kind of guy who's gonna m- make you ready for for the war, you know. Like he's he's not like a how can I say he's not he's like he's he's a warrior, you know. Like so when you go there, you go there to fight, and right. that's something that helps a lot, you know. He ain't there to 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 pussy you or to nurse you. Oh, no. He's there to. He'd be a hard ass. I hear him in the corner. He's a hard ass man. But I want to ask you this: Does it remind you of home when he coaches you? Um, I because I don't know if you had coaches like that back home. I can imagine if if they're anything like Henry Kuf. I know I know a lot of Europe is very Dutch style, um, mm-hmm. and I just that's just based off of watching a lot of film on, of course, the Golden Glory guys. And I'm a huge Ramon De- Decker's fan. Yep. And uh, it seems just a lot of like right there, all around the France and Amsterdam and and Germany. Like that's a whole bunch of like Dutch style. Does it remind mm-hmm. you of home a little bit? Does it kind of make you feel like good, kind of training with Henry or having a guy like Henry, um, or or am I just talking out of my ass right now? No, no, that's true. That's that's what I, I was saying. Um, I've been training at Golden Glory, um, actually for like oh wow, oh fuck a yeah, a few months, you know, like in Netherlands. And uh, that's how also I got my style, you know, in a little bit, you know. And uh, since I found Henry here, I was so happy because his style is correspond correspond to me like really, really it fits to me really well, you know. So right. I'm really happy, you know. You couldn't. I don't think you could have meshed a better person with the better no, style. No, for sure. Is what you're sure saying. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm, I'm a huge again. I'm a huge fan of it, and I kind of as just somebody. I, I not only interview fire. I love to watch fights. I love to watch breakdowns. I'm a huge breakdown guy, so that point yeah. kind of hit on me. It's like, well, Henry's from that kind of same style, and you're kind of from that same style, so it only made sense mm-hmm. to, to ask that question yeah. right there, man. Um, yeah, yeah. What, what's the biggest thing you miss about home, though, for real, man? You're, you're here in the States. I know a lot of – there's a lot of – you probably meet a lot of great people, but what's the one main thing you miss about home? Probably besides family. Like, is there a restaurant? Is there a, is there a neighborhood? Is there friends? I mean, what do you miss about home, my man? Um – I really was about to say only friends and family, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I had a good life over there, you know. I'm, I had my dogs, you know. I miss my dogs a lot. That's something like that um, I'm thinking about like every day. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, my dogs is like the number one, I guess, you know. Um, what kind of dog do you have? Uh, I had a dogo Argentino and a Burble, which is a um, South African Mastiff. Oh shit! Okay. So yeah, I had two, two two big dogs like that. You know, they were my baby too. You know, but they're they were good good dog. You know, I mean, they're still a good dog. You know, right, right. <laughs> but um, but uh, yeah, I mean them, and I guess some you know some some uh, some food over there. You know, I'm, I'm Turkish too. You know, so I was also I was also eating a lot of Turkish food all the time. And here, I don't really find it find it over there. You know, it's not that. It's more like uh, specific here, you know, like right. you need to go to Miami or some a, a few different places, you know, if you want to find that kind of food, you know. But, um, yeah, that's it. 
That's it, man. What, what's been the biggest adjustment coming from, from Europe? I, um, I talked to uh, one of your training partners. I don't know if he's there. I think he's in England right now, but well, your boy Linton Vassell, my boy Linton Vassell. Um, and he told me one of the biggest things was the language. Even though he speaks English, motherfuckers like, they got a different English over here in the United States. <laughs> of him all the time. And my English is not great. You know, my English is, is really like my Man, you're doing good, man. You're doing real good. Yeah, but we make fun of him. Even me, I don't understand him. You know, those people, they don't understand him sometimes. It's really funny. So, <laughs> so yeah, we, we, we joke a lot. Yeah, man. Has, has that been but, the uh, biggest thing, language, or has it been something Language, else? yeah. Yeah, language was the biggest, biggest problem, you know. I was struggling a lot, but I started learning, you know, and uh, that's cool. That's good, man. That's real good, man. Um, well, always at the end of the, uh, at the interviews, uh, Vulcan, I like to do a thing called Random Ask Questions. And uh, random ass questions, man. It's just some random ass questions, and uh, I'll just ask them off the top of my head, brother. First random ass question, man. Favorite drink at the bar? Um, I like tequila when I drink. All right. Make me wild. Oh yeah, make me wild. Like <laughs> it's also a problem because you know I end up in trouble sometimes with tequila. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, man. I'm Mexican. We get in trouble all the time when we drink tequila. Um. <laughs> um Favorite movie of all time? Do you watch a lot of movies? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, of course I love movies. Uh, favorite ever? I don't know. I, I guess Gladiator. If I have to pick one, it's going to be Gladiator. Oh, fucking Russell Crowe murking everybody in that yeah. movie. I mean, yeah, buddy. Just the, the punchline you say it all the time, you know, like, ooh. You know, it's crazy. This movie is crazy for you. Yeah, it's a great movie, man. Um, mm -hmm. Favorite MMA fighter of all time? Oh, wow. I don't know. You know, as I told you, I, know I don't you're not really a fan, know yeah. that, but I will say over him because he's the guy really who brought me into MMA, you know? So um, I've been, I've been, when I was in Netherlands, I, I was living with him, you know, and he helped me so much, you know, like I was, he, he put me in his house, you know, like he helped me with food, with a bunch of stuff, you know? And I was a kid, I was like 19, you know, like, so... I wasn't even a fighter yet. I, I never fought before that. And he told me, hey, you're good, you should fight, you know. And then I started doing my first amateur fight over there in Netherlands, you know. That's and uh, awesome. I guess he's the one who started me, so, like, giving me the, the fire, you know. So I'll say over him for sure. I am, I am with you. I'm going to talk about my Alistair story with you, man, because that's amazing. He's one of my top three favorite fighters of all time. Mm -hmm. I actually, I met him when I was, uh, I went down to Jackson Winklejohn back yep. last June. Just a, one of the nicest guys ever, man. But one of the biggest guys I've ever met, but one of the nicest guys I've ever met, man. He invited me to go play poker at the pool, and I don't even play poker. And he's like, oh, you want to play the poker? And I'm like, no, bro, I don't even play poker. He's like, okay, well, you can come play the poker by the pool. And I'm like, all right, bro, I, I guess I go, man. Like, just a nice guy, like, just a super nice, I, I don't know, man. Friendly, yeah. friendly giant. I guess it's mm -hmm. the best way okay. I can put it, man. And I, I feel like a lot of people, even in this community, they're like, oh, Alistair Overeem's a, he's a douche, he's a bad guy. But I've never, I, I've always seen him as a good guy. And when I met him, just one of the nicest people I think I could have ever met, man. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm glad to hear, man. Alistair Overeem is one of my favorite fighters. I hated, I hate seeing him yeah. lose, and I love seeing him win. So that's awesome, man, to, that you got to have that time with him. Um, do, you, uh, do, you, do you read a lot of books? I was, I was, and I'm, I, I stopped a little bit. I got three books on my table right now, but uh, uh, I mean, like, I need to go back at it. You know? What's your favorite style of books? Is it fiction, nonfiction? Is it, you know, fantasy? What What's your favorite style? No, it's, uh, I, I I read about self improvement a lot, and I was reading a lot before about politics, you know, and religion. Of course. So like geopolitics. I don't know how you call that in geopolitics, English. Geopolitics, yeah. So. So, yeah, so I guess that, that, that's it. Oh, shit. Vulcan, you cut off, brother. Are you still there? I can, uh, I'm still I, here. I can hear I'm you, but I can't see you. I guess I got another interview coming here now. Oh, no. Okay. Do we need to cut off? Um, you can still see me, right? Okay. All right, there you are, bro. You got, you got a bang out, bro? Uh, yeah. Mm, uh, all right, man. Two or three minutes, I guess. Oh, we just let everybody know, man, where they can uh, 
find you on social media. I felt like they got a good chance to get to know you, man. Um, let everybody know where they can get a chance to to find you on social media. Shout out any sponsors you got, my man. This is your time. Let yeah, them know where so they can find you. Fight. My Facebook is just my name, Volkan Özdemir, or you can type in the website just Volkan MMA, I guess. You know. And um, and uh, Instagram, I only have Facebook and Instagram, so it's Volcan, and you have um, uh, how you call that stuff on the uh, which one? Yeah, just type my name. You, you'll find <laughs> you'll find something. You'll, you'll, find, find, <laughs> you'll find me. I don't know what to say. But yeah, make sure to follow me for sure. And um, I want to thanks also Liquid Vida, you know, Blackstone Labs that's giving my supplement Liquid Vida that make me healthy and stuff like that. And uh, Carpac, that's been for, with me from the beginning, you know, Hayabuda is going to come for me for my next fight. And a lo- lot of people, you know, have been there for me since the beginning, my family first, you know. Yeah, man. We definitely, well, welcome. we definitely appreciate the time. I know you got to get going. Thank you so much. Yes. Best of luck next week. And I'll stay in contact with you, brother. Hopefully we can have you on in the future, cool. okay? Cool. No, thank you so much. All right, my man. You See have a good day. Peace.